Today on Timescast, Libyan rebels try to create an alternative government to Colonel Qaddafi's rule. Foreign journalists wait and wait for Colonel Qaddafi's announced press conference in Tripoli. Uh, they rolled out the red carpet, they brought the bomb sniffing dogs, they stationed uh, soldiers with machine guns around the hotel. And in Washington, Democrats and Republicans differ on what to do about the budget. These votes will show us who wants an easy applause line and who wants to strengthen our nation's bottom line. Muammar well, Gaddafi recently said, I am Libya. It was a typically vainglorious statement by the longtime Libyan leader, but it also said something about the challenges facing rebels as they try to constitute a new state in Benghazi and the outlying areas. They've been trying to reconstitute a rump bureaucracy and trying to formulate some notion of a transitional government that could negotiate with the West and also provide a face to Libyans themselves that there will be stability in the wake of Gaddafi's potential fall. Egyptian government and the Tunisian government were established with all the institutions when people revolted, revolted against a specific party with a tyrant on top of it. When they tumbled that guy, the following day the government was functioning. The Provisional Transitional National Council is going to face the task of negotiating with the West, of trying to get a no-fly zone imposed on Libya, of dealing with the divisions that that, that no-fly zone might create, that any kind of foreign intervention might create. We appeal to the United Nations to impose a no-fly zone in Libya, to protect our families and to prevent any aircraft attacks. In a press conference today with the deputy head of that council, he conflicted the head of the council's statement that there was a, a proposal for Gaddafi to step down in the next 72 hours. He said there were no differences, but in fact there are. There are differences over military intervention, over no-fly zone, over the very identity of this council. Those conflicts are likely to grow in the weeks ahead as the euphoria of the moment wears off and the stark challenges ahead of them become clearer and clearer. We were notified this morning that Colonel Qaddafi himself was going to be visiting our hotel where they've kept 130-odd foreign journalists that they've invited to the capital. Uh, they rolled out the red carpet, they brought the bomb-sniffing dogs, they stationed uh, soldiers with machine guns around the hotel. And they warned us that if we stuck our heads out one of the upstairs balconies to get a good picture, we might get shot. And then we've been waiting for hours and hours and hours, and Colonel Qaddafi uh, hasn't yet shown up. So we're sort of uh, uh, birds in a gilded cage here in this very lovely Tripoli Hotel. Um, during that time, we've learned uh, over the phone that the town of Zawaya continues to be a battle. Uh, there have been various reports of whose flag was flying over the main square, the rebels or the Qaddafi forces. And in the east, it seems that Colonel Qaddafi's forces are aggressively bombing the city of Ras Lanouf, uh, which the rebels had taken a couple days ago. What I'm hearing from my colleague, uh, Karim Fahim, is now they may no longer hold that town by the end of the night. And on Capitol Hill, Republicans and Democrats face off on the budget. It's another day of theater between Republicans and Democrats in the Senate today, and the topic is just how much to cut from the domestic budget. They remain $50 billion apart. They'll have to resolve this by a week from Friday, or once again, we face the threat of a government shutdown. Democrats are going to have to do a lot better than this if we stand a chance of getting our nation's fiscal house in order. There's a fine line between a responsible budget and a reckless budget. Somewhat inconveniently for these senators, who, the former chairman of President Obama's fiscal commission, Erskine Bowles and Alan Simpson, have been on the Senate side, making clear that the problem is much broader. I came here today simply to ask you to act. I know these cuts are politically difficult. My bet is that they'd go right up into the limit Friday, March 18th, and they'll either then have another short-term extension while they continue to negotiate, or they'd have a government shutdown. One additional complication is that the president is also due to leave on Friday, March 18th, to go to South America on a diplomatic trip. In the end, it's just going to be one skirmish in what's likely to be a series of budget battles all through this year. Join us again tomorrow for Timescast.